Hey there, everybody. Today we're going to talk about my chop saw. So, uh, you know, we're all familiar with these. They're all over the place. There's any number of styles. Um, this one's a little bit different than many of them. If you're not aware, uh, a lot of these use a large abrasive disc, just like you would have on an angle grinder, just much larger, and they effectively grind their way through the material. They work really well. Um, they're excellent on hardened materials. If you have to do axle shafts or any other hardened material, they work great. But here I work uh, mostly with unhardened material, almost always mild steel, you know, regular square tube, those sort of things. So a lot of what we do here in this shop uh, for fabrication is furniture built. A lot of legs and supports and structures and things like that, which means a lot of angle cuts. Many different cuts, many different angles. Uh, we have some stock things that we do, but we also do a lot per spec, and that comes into customer request, uh, their desires, the appearance they want, etc., etc. So with that, uh, I went from the original, um, the original saws that use the abrasive discs to this cold saw. And it's called a cold saw because it leaves a cold cut. If you use an abrasive saw to cut steel, it is unbelievably hot. You can't touch it after it goes through the saw. This cold saw uses a blade with carbide teeth that cuts through the metal instead of sawing, or, I'm sorry, cuts through the metal instead of grinding through the metal. Uh, because it's cutting, it's making far less heat. The, place, the pieces of metal that come off of here can be used, grabbed by hand. You know, you're, you're good to just take them off of there. They'll be a little warm, but generally not hot. So the saw has been good for doing that. But for me, it falls short. And it falls short in really one primary area, and that's miters. Right? So there is a gauge on here, and I'll get a close-up of this, that lets you swivel this to do different degree cuts. And it's got an indicator on the back, uh, marked zero all the way up through 45 degrees, and you loosen a couple bolts in order to manipulate that angle. But the problem I run into is when I do long cuts. So most of the time when I buy stock, I don't buy something this long. I buy a full stick, and depending upon what I'm getting, that's 20 to 24 feet. So uh, if you haven't seen our cutting and grinding table video, that's part of the driving force between the video, and more of it will be explained in there. But go ahead and look at that video. Uh, there's some neat stuff on the table that will all play into this in a little bit. Uh, but back to the saw. So when I'm cutting a short piece of material, and if I want to cut a 45 on a short piece of material, you know, I'll set my guard to 45-ish. And I say ish for a reason, you saw why. Uh, it is not accurate by any means, it's an estimation. Okay, we put our material in here. And here we go, you can now see that my material is held at roughly 45 degrees to the blade, and we're gonna make a, an angle cut on that piece of material. Now we get two major problems with this. Um, the accuracy is so-so. Uh, the, the bolts that we release in the middle to adjust this angle have quite a bit of play on the pivot bolt, right? Also, the indicator is a roughly scrawled line um, on the, the, the pivot here. So, you know, am I really getting 45? Am I getting 46? Am I getting 43? I don't know what that, that possibly is. With a lot of welding projects, it really doesn't matter too much because you can um, make up that, the gap if there's a gap. But when we get into furniture, what happens is if your angles are wrong, you end up where the pieces don't meet. One might be larger than the other. And that is something you can't just make up for by filling it with weld. So it's pretty, pretty important that the angles that you create for your pieces are accurate uh, for the piece that you're cutting. Right? So with that, this saw has, um, has done fine, but it does not do well on miter cuts at all. And the truth of the matter is, um, you know, a 90 degree cut, I hardly ever do 90 degree cuts unless I'm cutting off a piece of stock. That's really about it. Most all of my cuts have some sort of bevel or miter to the end. So this saw is getting retired. Um, this was one of the original reasons this bench was built, but it was built also on the follow-on, uh, which is our next saw. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and slide the new saw over here. So let me go ahead and get this done and we'll be right back with the new saw. Okay, so here we are with the new saw. This is the new Evolution saw. The other one that I had on here was an Evolution brand as well. Excellent saw, not trying to downplay the saw. It does a great job. Just for me, it had too many deficiencies in cutting miters, cutting them repeatedly and cutting them quickly. Those were the two problems I ran into. Anytime I had to go from you know 15 to 30 to 45 degrees, if I needed an accurate cut, 
that meant measuring with a protractor of some type, setting the stop, you know, to get right. And it was just a huge pain in the butt to go back and forth all the time. So I finally broke down and bought the new Evolution compound miter saw, a metal cutting miter saw. To the best of my knowledge, the absolute first one on the market. I've never seen one of these before. Now, you've probably seen this. This is nothing new. These have been on the market for a year, maybe a little more. Not 100% sure with that. But um, what I noticed is um, they get really good reviews. That nobody has really bashed on the thing yet. It's come up pretty well. Um, nobody's cloned it yet. I haven't seen a Harbor Freight version, anything like that. So I figured we're going to go ahead and give this thing a shot. And I purchased this out of my own money, not sponsored by anybody. Just want to let you guys know. So. Um, I want to maintain no sponsorship on this channel if at all possible. Um, it gets expensive to do, but that's what you do, right? So uh, I, I personally don't like unboxing videos. I don't really care how something was shipped, um, but a lot of people like to see them. So we're going to go through and I'm going to do somewhat of an unboxing video where we're going to slice the side off of this so you can see in here. So let me go get a uh, razor knife and be right back. <coughs> all right, here we go. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Slice this thing open. There we go. Okay, on the very top of the box, we've got our blade. Uh, in my experience, using the other saw, same blade. It's an excellent blade. I've been very happy with it. it lasts a very long time. There is a learning curve to it, and we'll go into that. I'm going to review the saw itself later. I know there's been quite a few reviews on there, but why not have another one, right? That's what the internet's about, rehashing the same content over and over and over again on everybody's channels. Especially if you watch a lot of the hobby machining channels. Pretty much a lot of the same projects going on over and over again. Not the bad, but there's just a... Not, not a lot of originality that I see anymore. Hopefully we'll see more of that soon. I'm going to cut this off. Get it out of the way. So you guys can see a little better. Oh, boy, that was harder than it should have been. I guess if you open a box the way it's supposed to, it's probably easier. Okay, so we got the blade out. Fold, fold these back. Let's see what else we've got in here. Okay, we've got a few pieces. There's one of our adjusters. Our adjuster and stops on there. Another stop. Okay, and a little piece, let's see here. Static is getting shot. Get off of there. Okay, there's another piece. See if we can tip this up for you guys to see what was in here. Okay, so we took that adjuster out, adjuster out. There's our documentation. Uh, a couple pieces we took out, some small knobs, and some little um, plates that they give you for uh, beveled material, round, square, you know, things like that for clamping down. Okay, so there is that piece. Nothing else in the top here. Let's move this out of the way. And let's see what we got. Okay, our saw is packed upside down in here. So let me show you. There we go. Here is the motor assembly. And we'll take this out, and below that is the base. There's a motor assembly. Next piece of starter foam out. Another little tip so you guys can see what's what in here. So here's our base, very nicely packed. Done an excellent job. A few more small bits in here. A hold down. This has got some great features, really great features. Uh, aside from the mitering capability, the clamping capability is really nice. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way and get the base pulled out. Okay, here's our base. Okay, and nothing underneath. There we go, that completes everything within the box. So now we're going to go through and I'm going to lay these out in a little bit more order. And we're going to walk through really quickly the uh, quick setup instructions on here.
Okay, so I adjusted the camera angle so you guys can see the components a little bit better. Just wanted to show you the paperwork. We have a little cutting guide that shows you the best position to cut material of various types and orientations. And a lot of that relates to how far back you place the actual head of the unit. So I'm gonna put that aside because we don't need it at the moment. Okay. We have our warranty registration card, which I definitely recommend registering just in case you ever have an issue. And of course our instruction booklet. I haven't opened this yet. I don't know what's inside. We're just gonna go ahead and do this in real time so you guys can see what it takes to put this saw together. So we'll get the other paperwork out of the way because we don't need these at the moment. Okay, and let's open our book up and see what our book says. Okay, so we have some pictures on the English instructions, of course, you know, so these are, um, you know, English speaking photographs here. Okay, there we go, and it looks like we've got 18, there are 26 steps in total. Uh, but a lot of that is some very small pieces. So let's just start at the beginning. The first thing it says to do is unlock this, and it looks like we're gonna put it at the 90 degree mark to allow us to access the pins on the rear. So we loosen the uh, handle here. That's what tightens down. Push the pin down just like any other miter saw. And let's bring it back to the zero degree mark, and it latches in place. Wonderful. Okay, now if you can see, we're gonna take our motor assembly and slide it onto the pins on the back side. So I'll step over and do that. And this is a little heavy. Uh, it's not real bad, but trying to get it up over and slid onto the pins without dropping it everywhere might be a uh, little bit of a challenge. Oh yeah, it wants to fall forward for sure. locking pin on here with a retaining clip. We're going to pull that clip out that will allow this to lock in place. There we go. And we can lock it in three different positions. Yeah. And then there's a clamp to tighten it. So even if the pin gets removed, it doesn't come off. Great. So we've got that next piece done. Let's see what they state. Okay. Yes. Slide it on. Pull the pin out right here. And then we put this support on the back end with two small screws, which are in this package here. So we'll go ahead and grab that, which is good because I noticed when that was all the way to the rear, it was a little bit tippy. So I'm glad that that's what uh, this is actually for. This piece just goes on the back side and a couple screws through the top to hold it onto the bars in the rear. So I'm just gonna install these finger tight right now. I'll come back after this and tighten everything up. But for the sake of the video, we're just gonna assemble this quickly. Okay, got that piece. Uh, what have we got next here? Okay. Uh, oh, we're gonna put this large brace system, it looks like, that picture is very small. Yes, it's this large arm system. And this goes on, boy, that is really hard to see in that photograph. The orientation is not great. Let me see. All right, I've got to try and figure out where this goes. This might be a look at the photographs kind of thing. Okay. Ah, I see. It goes on the front side. Okay. That goes here. Well, I don't know what that's even for, actually. It's interesting. It snaps in there, and it looks like it's got different detents. Hmm, very interesting. I'll have to read the instructions on that one. I don't know what that is even for. Okay, so we've got that done. And now we have two little thumb screws, spring-loaded thumb screws, these, that go in the front to hold these in place. So far going well, everything has threaded in smoothly. I mean, it's only been, you know, four things, but they're not powder coated holes or anything jammed up or boogered up with anything. So that's been nice. Okay, so there's that piece. 
Got our thumb screws put in. Uh, okay, there's a lock for the head, and they're just identifying where that is, and they want us to unlock that. It's already unlocked, but that piece is right here. So for storage, transportation, whatever it may be, you can just press that little lock in and hold the head down. So we're going to raise it up for the moment here. There we go. This probably be a little faster on your own, you know, because you wouldn't be showing this all to a camera. Okay, so we've got that done. Uh, this is going to uh, want us... Boy, I can't even figure out what that's trying to say. It's talking about putting the blade on in an upright position. Oh, I see. Loosen this screw. There's a screw on the side that allows a panel to swing out of the way to access the hole where the blade is, uh, is attached at. Oh, that's very nice. I, I like that. It makes it very easy to get to. That, that, take this off. I'm going to go take my blade out of the package here. Here is our blade, and as you can see, there's a directional arrow, and there's also a directional arrow printed on the side of the housing to be sure you get the blade in the correct orientation. So we'll slide the blade up in there. There we go. And secure everything in place. And again, we're going to come back and tighten everything up off camera. Okay, there we go. We've got that done. We've got our blade in place. I still can't tell what figure 11 is. I'm trying to do that straight from there. It shows some small pin and retention pawl something. Oh, this. Okay. That is the lock for the blade, I believe, so you can actually tighten the bolt. Maybe that's not what that is. I don't know. That's usually what those are. This isn't spinning, though, because I haven't got anything on here tightened, but I believe that's what that is. Okay. Yes, that's, that is that location. So. Let's see what figure 11. Are there words to tell me what that says? I'll have to cheat now. Not really. N number 15, arbor lock button. So that is exactly what that is. This is what you lock the arbor on so you can tighten the blade in place using the screw and washer. Okay, so we've got that piece done. We're going to go on the next piece. Okay, they're showing the blade direction uh, right there as a follow-up. So now we're going to look at putting the adjustable stops on. Ah, that's what that's for. I understand now. Okay. These quick-release stops are what ride on this bar. Okay. And they just ride. You can get them on straight. Boy, there we go. There's something preventing that from going on. I don't know what it is. On both sides. Okay, so that's kind of boogered up. The uh, machine slots in here are either dirt. Yeah, there's a big, big burr inside of here preventing it from going on. So I'm going to file that down. Let's try the other one, though, so you guys can see what it does. Uh, hopefully this one just slides on. There we go. And that just slides on, gives you a quick adjust half nut for tightening down your stock in here. Okay, I really like this quick adjust, that's really nice. I can get right up next to the blade, I can cut very small stock on here. I really like that as well. Alright, so that looks great. I will file this one off camera and install it, so not a big deal. Okay, we've got those in. Now we're going to look at the vertical stop. And the vertical stop goes down the rear of the fence, and you know, it's a hold down. That's really all it's for. So you can hold your material down, and there are locations here, here, here. 
and of course two on the other side of the blade. So we're going to go ahead and just pop that in there. And as you can see, uh, it's got a thumb screw down here. We can adjust the height where that sits. And then of course another quick adjustment. Far up down, small stock, we can drop it right down. You know, if we're doing flat stock, we can put it near the bottom. Larger stock, we can put it near the top. And of course, because this is a quick adjust, you know, we can very quickly get rather large stock in here to cut off. And when you're not using it, you can just drop the whole thing right out of the way. On the other side, I assume. There we go. There we go. And that can just be out of your way. Very easy to store. Okay, I like that. Okay, so we've got that piece in. Okay, the little feet for round or, you know, um, non-square, non-flat material. Could be cutting angle. Uh, when you want to cut angle, you usually want to enter on the corner anyway. So that's what you would use these for. They would just slide over. Okay, and now we have something we can put a round or angled stock against. Okay, very good. And then of course our normal operational things about how to depress and you know run the saw itself. And then it's showing the assembled pictures at the various distances that the saw is able to be. So there's all the way nearest the guard, a center distance, and a furthest rear. Depends on what you're cutting where you would place that. Okay. All right, and now here they're just showing the lock and the pin that allows you to move the saw motor uh, forward and aft on that rear support. And then, of course, uh, some locking, um, some locking detents that are available as well. So let me see here. Again, hard to see on their little pictures. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I couldn't tell what this was in the little blown up picture. They're trying to identify the safety catch up in the handle that has to be depressed before you can pull the handle down. But uh, all in all, that's it. Uh, mine is tightening everything. Uh, that took maybe a couple of minutes total uh, if I weren't recording it for the camera. So overall, that's been really, really fast. I, I hope you liked the initial discussion of why I got this. Uh, you know, obviously the ability to cut any of these cuts. I mean, there's 30 degrees. You know, I do a lot of 15 degree cuts. We've got a zero right there. There's stops built in at various locations, but you can stop anywhere you want in between those. You know, so there's, we'll get on zero, there's five, and if I wanted to get 10 degrees, I've got a nice indicator right here for 10 degrees, and then I can just lock that in really quickly. So I do a bunch of 10 degree cuts, and now if I want to do the counter cut, and that's what's really nice about this saw, it swivels in both directions. So you see I can go all the way here, 46 degrees, and all the way back, 46 degrees. Excellent. Okay, there's the basic features of the saw. Uh, we'll go through and do some cuts in another video talking about this saw versus the standard dry cut. So, uh, you know, it wasn't too much, just a little bit of unboxing and assembly, but I hope you guys really like it. And stay tuned for our second video where we actually talk about the differences between the saw and how much more efficient this is going to make my work versus the regular cutoff saw.